Hi, I'm Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus and the Shortcut series. Today I am going to show you sharpening techniques. I will discuss local and global sharpening techniques and all of them I'm going to use completely non-destructively. Just as always, that's my favorite subject. If you have been following me, you know that I always try to do everything completely non-destructively. And that's very useful because it saves a lot of time and it keeps everything that you create completely flexible. So if the client comes back with changes, you will be the ace who can change them very easily and quickly. So let me show you first of all uh, local sharpening and then we are going to concentrate on global sharpening techniques. Local sharpening is something like sharpening only the eye of this parrot, for example. For that, I am going to create a new layer and call this sharpening, or I can call it local sharpening. Okay, like that. And I am going to select the sharpen tool, which has an option called sample all layers and also protect detail. These are the options I like to use together with this tool. Then I can also use the option, if you have a tablet, you can use the pressure for the size of your brush so to change the size of the brush and I am going to start straight away drawing over the eye so I draw over once or twice and then I'm going on around the edges and now if I turn off my layer you can see this was before and this is after so it's a huge difference already and this tool adds a lot of contrast uh, to the image itself, so to the details that we draw over. We can do the same thing here on the feathers and you can see now if I turn it off, that was before and this is after. So this is a great non-destructive sharpening technique and you can always uh, just fade the effect back by reducing the opacity. It still looks good before and after. And you can also always change the blend mode. Um, you can always try overlay, which will give you a different effect. So it's almost uh, also changing a bit the colors. As you can see, it makes the colors a bit stronger. Or you can use soft light, which is a bit softer version, but also makes a little bit different effect. So combining blend modes and the sharpen tool can give you an effect like this. And you can very easily use it uh, on any uh, part of the image. Let me turn this layer off and let me double click on the background layer to turn it into a smart object. I am going to right click and choose convert to smart object. Now I can show you the global sharpening technique. I am going to filter and I choose sharpen, smart sharpen. Once I select this, I will get a preview where I click, I see before, and when I let go, I see after. Here the amount will increase the amount of the sharpening effect and the radius will increase the contrast on the edges. So I can reduce that and I can increase the amount a bit more. This is quite high, I intentionally go a bit too high with my sharpening. So this was before, this is after. And let me click on OK. And as you can see, we have a very strong sharpening effect but we can also change the blend mode of this sharpening by clicking, double clicking on this little icon here because we use the smart object, our smart sharpen is a uh, smart filter so if I double click on that I can change the smart sharpen's blending mode so I can always experiment once again with overlay, soft light or maybe even using something like screen or multiply depending on what effect you want to achieve Okay, um, you can always try luminosity as well, which sometimes works quite nicely. But let me just click on cancel. And what I would like to show you with smart sharpening, which is a global adjustment, is that it can also be used locally or reduced its effect where we don't need it. Like in the background, I definitely don't want to sharpen anything because the original background is nice and smooth and there are no details there but as soon as I add the smart sharpen we will have noise visible in the background. So how can we get rid of that? It's very easy. We just need to use the quick selection tool and make a selection of the background. Okay, so I just quickly make that selection and maybe here on the beak I zoom closer and hold down Alt to remove this part from my selection. 
yep and maybe here I am going to just again hold down alt and remove this from the selection so that looks quite good this selection now I can select the smart filters mask and press command backspace because I have my back, uh, black color in the background I'm going to press command backspace or control backspace on PC and now if we zoom closer you will be able to see that the sharpening effect is only applied on the parrot's head so if I shift click on the mask you can see now it's visible on the background now it's only visible on the parrot so using the mask on the smart filter allowed me to be able to show only the, eff uh, the effect only on the parrot so that made it uh, local sharpening or selective sharpening which I can always edit using the mask and I can always go back double clicking on smart sharpen to edit the sharpening effect here as well and let me show you another way of sharpening the image I am going to duplicate this layer so I press command J and I am going to right click on the smart filters and choose clear smart filters and I am going to call this one high pass and the other layer smart sharpen okay and on this new one I would like to show you another technique which can be also used together with a smart object and that is again under filter other and high pass I really like this sharpening technique as well where we can set again the radius of the effect let me set it to four pixels now I click on OK and then to be able to make this work this whole sharpening technique we need to again go to the blending options of the high pass filter so I double click on it and set that to overlay once it's set to overlay we can see the effect of the sharpening if I zoom closer and turn it off and on you can see it also works really well and also with this technique we will see less noise in the background so it's up to you which one you use you can use local sharpening high pass smart sharpen or there are other sharpening techniques as well the most important thing is try to always work completely non-destructively so in this case using separate layers for the sharpen tool and using smart objects to be able to turn your sharpening filters into smart filters and that's all I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next episode, I am going to show you how to design an advert, again following a completely non-destructive workflow. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.